Howdy. One of my favorite types of flow are vortexes. From tornadoes to whirlpools, and even a bunch of ideal vortexes scattered about. But there is something interesting you can do if you correctly place them and then set their strengths correctly. You can actually model an airfoil. So to begin with, we need to start with discretizing the airfoil. We have two options with how we go about spacing. On the top we have equal, and the bottom we have cosine spacing. As we increase the amount of panels to be used, we see the leading edge never really gets its curve just right, while the cosine spacing does. For this video, we'll be using the cosine spacing due to this reason. Now let's say we want six panels. We can modify our cosine spacing equation to this, and this lets us know where the discretation along the camber line is. So in red is our vortex locations, and blue is our control point, which we'll call the co-location points. We find these by marking a perpendicular to the camber line at the cosine spacing intersections, and going out to the surface of the airfoil. If you are using a NACA 4 series, you can watch my previous video to give a better understanding of how we find the thickness equation for the airfoil. For this video, I will be using these values so you can follow along. The main thing we're trying to do with these vortexes is that we need to adjust their strengths so that the flow at the co-location points is perpendicular to the normal vector at that point. This said another way states that the flow is parallel to the surface and with many panels this begins to capture the shape of the airfoil identically as we can see. So one way to ensure velocity is perpendicular at all these locations is that the velocity dotted with the normal vector is zero at all these locations. We can further break the velocity into two types, velocity at co-location point induced by all vortexes and the velocity at co-location points induced by just the free straight flow. We can then simplify these equations into a matrix representation where A is a coefficient matrix based fully on geometry, gamma is a column vector with all the unknown vortex strengths we wish to find, and the right hand side is all the velocities not associated with the vortex, and in our case, just the free stream influences. Starting with A, we can think of the structure as the rows are associated with the co-location points and the columns are with the vortexes. So A11 would be the velocity induced on co-location 1 by vortex 1 if that vortex had a strength of 1. And A43 would be the co-location 4 affected by vortex 3 and so on. U and V are the velocity components of the vortex at that co-location point and n, x are the components of the normal vector at that co-location point. Since the vortex velocity is dependent on the distance from its singularity, we find r to be the radius from the vortex to the co-location point. If you're following along, you should have gotten something close to this. Mine is rounded for display, but do not round your a in the matrix in your calculations. You might have also noticed the last column is the same as the first. This is due to the first and last vortex being at the same place. Also a very important thing to note is the last row. This is known as the cut of condition. We need the circulation at the trailing edge to be zero, and this makes sure that the flow leaves the trailing edge smoothly and does not reverse either up and over or down and under. Next we will find our right hand side, which is much simpler. We will take the x component of the free stream times the x component of the co-location normal vector, then do the same for the y component, and then add them together. So solving the system of equations, we find our gamma strengths to be these. If you were following along, you will see a very big difference between our results, namely first and last row are zero, and not very large positive and negative numbers that are equal in magnitude. So one way the cut a condition can be satisfied is if the strengths cancel out or both are zero. A lot of times a linear solution solver will not go with the zero option and these need to be set to zero manually. Another discrepancy is just the values themselves. This method has a very bad condition number for matrix A, meaning matrix A is almost a singular matrix and the results cannot be trusted to be exact. We will discuss this later. So now that we have our vortex strengths, we can make the velocity fields as seen here. Since we are using ideal vortexes, we can linearly add them all up and then add in the free stream flow. This is the velocity field equation, and if you want your airfoil to show the angle of attack instead of the flow, 
You can either hit this field with a rotation matrix in the negative angle of attack, or you can pre-rotate your vortex locations and your free stream just becomes you in the x direction only. Now we can plot the coefficient of pressure along the upper and lower surface. We do this by using this equation, where we find the vortex strength at the middle of the panel and use this along with L being the distance between the two ends of the panel, those being the two vortexes. We do this for all the panels, and when we plot it, we get this. Now it should be noted, most if not all CP plots will have an inverted y-axis, but this is not the inverted representation. Now, for the coefficient of lift, we need to invoke Kutta and his friend Joukowsky for this equation. We simply sum up all the gammas we found and plug it in along with the airfoil's cord and the free stream velocity. Now, if you've been following along, we should have different values, again due to the ill-conditioned A matrix. In Python, I found CL to equal 1.1. While doing it in MATLAB, it was found to be 1.7. But since we're doing six panels just due to its simplicity, thankfully, whenever we do many, many more panels, say 600, both Python and MATLAB approach CL equal to 1.456. And checking with XFOIL for a NACA 2412 airfoil, this is pretty close if we set the angle of attack to 10. So this is how you can use vortexes to do some pretty interesting analysis on airfoils. But this was just the most simplest of the ones. You can take this much further and add extra elements to your airfoil add a ground to see the ground effects of low flying wings. You can even use it to animate simple stuff such as change of the angle of attack. There's also different types of paneling, such as linear strength vortex paneling, using sources and doublets instead. And if you want further research, I recommend Low Speed Aerodynamics by Katz. For the ending, I will leave you with this beautiful airfoil. Behold, the NACA 999.